Hello, I'm working on a, an embroidery design and I want to add a little bit of metallic thread. And I know that it's kind of tricky to work with metallic thread in embroidery. Um, and I'll just share a few tips that I've had uh, success with. So um, here is, I think this is a sulky. I've taken the labels off. It's sulky, it's variegated. And I'm going to use, I'm gonna take my embroidery needle out and I'm going to use this um, metallic needle uh, by Schmetz. And I found that this works better because I believe it is the scarf, um, the part of the needle that has the hole where the thread goes through is different from metallic and it tends to not fray the thread as much as a regular em embroidery needle. And I think that that is most of the problem with a uh, metallic embroidery design. So hold on a second and I'm gonna get going. Let's just take this off. Sorry about my angles here. this one off. Set that aside because I'm going to use it in a minute. I'm going to install my metallic needle. I think I need to feel this. I have all the regular uh, embroidery settings that I would usually have. I'm threading in it, thread in every kind of normal way. I am going to do something a little different though. I'm going to pull out a little bit off the spool and then uh, thread. And what I want, why I did that is I think it helps to get rid of that, uh, any, any rough edges that might be there that could cause this thread to unravel. So fingers crossed, press her foot down, and we go, I'm gonna stop, trim my tails off here, and let's go again. I like the metallic. It, just a little bit of it goes a long way. And if you're working with a design that has a lot of blending, like this, like these are three different shades, very, very close together. Um, a variegated thread works, works really nicely. This design, incidentally, is one of the standard designs that comes with your machine. And all I did is I just reduced it a little bit to fit in this, this piece. Um, and then I mirrored it. So they're exactly the same. And then they're just mirrored. I changed the bright colors a little bit to go with the fabric that I'm using. I'm making a a wallet for one of my friends and she loves butterflies. She loves purple. And I usually wouldn't combine these colors together, but I think it goes really nicely with my lining fabric, which is a, a pretty batik. The base that I'm embroidering on 
is a an apparel um, faux leather. Uh oh. Yes. Yeah, so we broke one, but not to fail, uh, not to worry. I mean, think this happens a lot more with uh, the regular needle. So hold on. Let me see if I can salvage this. If you break one, I find I look at my the edge and it's kind of frayed. So I will cut a good chunk off of this thread and before I need I thread it back up again because I don't it's kind of like when your nails start splitting. Once they start splitting, they they keep on splitting. Or hair or back in the day when you used to wear pantyhose. I heard a sound I don't like. You know you can kind of hear when it's getting ready to break a thread. Hopefully. I like that. A little bit of metallic goes a long way. It really just adds a little bit of sparkle. There's some little bit of strays here. I'll clean those up afterwards. You know, sometimes when you reduce the size of one of the designs, um, the stitches end up going a lot closer together, and um, that means they're dense, and you're more likely to get bunched up uh, under the needles. Yeah, it broke again. This is why a lot of people don't use the metallic thread, is because it breaks but I will say it breaks less often with the metallic needle than when I've tried using the um, sorry I had to stop talking when I've tried to use just the regular embroidery needle. I'm gonna pull this through and hopefully, I'm gonna double check my threading, make sure it's good. I'll hold this. One, two, three, four. Oh 
Come on, we're almost done with this. Here we go. That was on the other side. That was the portion that I had a, a break. Okay. So, you know, it could be just the quality of this thread. See how it's all frayed up and it's all, um, see how it that happens? So that is what happens when you don't use the metallic. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's all like, stripped and frayed. The metallic um, needle doesn't catch or rub on it as quite as bad. So yeah, um, I think the metallic needle does help a lot. Thanks for bearing with me through this experiment. twisting to be rats. No, I can't do it. If I think about it too hard, it's like typing, keyboard. Okay, we made it through that. That's about all of the metallic I can stand on this project because it's pain, but far less of a pain with a metallic needle, I think. And in small 
quantity. It's not so bad. Um, I enjoy using metallic and decorative stitches when I'm layering them. So I'll maybe do one uh, sort of a base stitch and then layer on a top of it with a uh, oops, uh, with a uh, metallic thread in a maybe either the same pattern or a different one. Um, it's kind of nice to add a little. And also it blends nicer when you break a thread um, when it's layered like that. Anyway, I hope this helped you.